What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at the sneaker releases in the second half of March 2020 and I let you know what I think about each one of these sneakers and whether I think each one is going to sit on shelves or sell out. The beginning of March was a little bit slow, there wasn't a huge amount of releases dropping but it looks like just the sneaker world in general is making up for that with March 14th through March 31st. There's a ton of sneakers releasing and a lot of them are pretty crazy. In fact, I think this might be one of those rare months where we have more sells than we have sits which I haven't had in a while actually. But before we actually jump into that, I wanna show you guys some progress on the Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs Origin shoe. Now this is still the first sample. This is a sample that we actually made in Portugal last week. And if you guys haven't seen that video where we put the shoe together and created the whole first sample, make sure to check that out. There'll be a link in the description below. It's an awesome video. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but it really shows the entire production process of a sneaker. It really has nothing to do with me being there. It's just really cool to see that whole process. I just found out from the factory, we're getting the second official sample of this shoe in next week which will have the lower cut blue leather here with some backing so it doesn't look as wrinkly it'll also have the slightly longer tongue and this uh, pull tab will be tacked to the tongue so I don't have to use tape <laughs> to keep it up there anymore but something that I tried just on my own was actually take my Travis Scott laces out of my pair of Travis Scott's and throw them on this shoe just to see what the shoe looks like with pink laces or just flat laces in general I also weave the laces through the inner lace punch outs rather than the outer ones because I feel like it gives it sort of a cool unique look and I also didn't weave them through the uh, uh, the leather pull tab in the center because some people were saying they didn't like that too much and I wanted to give the shoe sort of a looser, more worn in vibe and I feel like this really did that. Now the shoe is not gonna come with pink laces, it's gonna come with the orange laces that you saw in some of the previous sample images and it's also gonna come with a pair of white wax laces, I believe. So that'll look a little bit closer to this and actually closer to the pair of white laces I've got on the other side of the pair right over there but I'm really excited about this shoe. I'm super excited to see the second sample. Although I like this first sample, there are a couple changes that I really think need to be made. And I'm just really excited to see all the changes. So I'll make sure to do an unboxing video as soon as that sample comes in. And if you want to pre-order a pair of the Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs Origins right now, there's a link in the description below. They should ship in mid-May. Unfortunately, the 100 numbered pairs are sold out. They actually sold out within the first six hours of this shoe going live. Thank you guys so much for that. That was crazy. But you can still grab a pair of the standard pair through that link in the description below. As usual, in this Sitter Cell video, we're gonna be taking a look at all of the sneakers releasing from March 14th to March 31st, and I'll let you know what I think of each one of these sneakers and whether I think each one is gonna sit on shelves or sell out. But without further ado, let's jump right into the video on March 14th. The first shoe that we're gonna talk about today is the Air Jordan 1 High Zoom in Racer Blue. It's hard for me to say this because I love the Air Jordan 1, but this Jordan 1, it's not it. I, I I can't stand this shoe. There are so many things that could have just been done a little bit differently, and this sneaker would have been great. It's an awesome silhouette, um, but it's just not it. As the name would suggest, this shoe features full-length zoom, like the previous pair that released last year, and for some reason, they decided to make it look awful instead of just making it a normal Jordan 1. I don't get it. The toe of the sneaker is covered in light gray patent leather which surrounds white leather. You've also got a light gray Nike swoosh and then on the heel for some reason you've got a translucent wing panel thing. I'm not sure what to call it but it just doesn't doesn't look good. Not only that, but the shoe also features a semi-translucent outsole to show off the Zoom Air unit in the sole, and you've also got a blue sock liner. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit. It's not that bad. It's still a decent looking sneaker. But for an Air Jordan 1, I've got really high standards, and this just isn't at those standards. There's nothing wrong with the shoe. If you like it, great. It's just not something that I want to pick up personally. As to whether I think this shoe is going to sit or sell, I feel like this one's kind of a mixed bag. I could kind of see it go either way. One, because it is an Air Jordan 1 high, and from a distance, the colorway does kind of look like a standard Jordan 1, but on the other side of the coin we saw with the other Zoom colorway of the Air Jordan 1s, it just kind of sat and even went on clearance. And I think this one might do better than that pair, but I still don't think this shoe is going to sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. Don't get me wrong though, I wouldn't be surprised if this shoe sold out, it just won't be a pair that I'll be buying. Next up, we've got the Nike Adapt BB 2.0 in the 2K exclusive Chicago colorway. The Nike Adapt BB 2.0 is the latest version of the Nike Adapt BB. It's a slightly updated version of last year's model. In my opinion, it features much cleaner styling and it's just a better looking sneaker. Interesting fact about this shoe, but about two weeks ago, I was actually in New York on Fox Business talking about the original version of this shoe. I'm not sure why they decided to have me on, but it was kind of cool to be on live TV. I don't know if I like the all red colorway better than the standard black colorway. I feel like it's a little bit too loud, but at the end of the day, it is a self-lacing sneaker, and the only reason to buy it is to really 
kind of show off that you have a self-lacing sneaker. So for that reason, I think a lot of people are going to be interested in it. Not only that, but this shoe apparently is only available through 2K and having to own the 2K game. So for that reason, I think the shoe is going to be pretty limited. And because of that, I think it's going to sell. Also releasing on the 14th, we've got the Nike Dunk Low Safari. The styling from this sneaker is obviously inspired by the Atmos collaboration from a couple years back, and because of that, there's already a lot of hype behind this sneaker. And of course, don't forget to add the fact that this shoe is a Nike Dunk, when dunks are extremely popular, really means that this shoe is probably going to sell almost immediately. It's a decent looking sneaker, but I'm not in love with it. I do really like that mini Nike swoosh on the toe, I know that's like a tiny detail to like, but for some reason, I'm kinda drawn to that bit. And of course, because the shoe is so hyped up, I gotta give this shoe a sell. Then after that, we've got another Nike Dunk Low release with the Nike Dunk Low Syracuse. As the name would suggest, this shoe comes in the collegiate Syracuse orange and white, and overall, even if you don't like Syracuse, this shoe does look dope. If you've been a Dunk fan for the last couple years and have been really depressed by the fact that Nike hasn't been dropping too many Dunks, this year is your year because you're getting so many good colorways. This Syracuse colorway is a super clean look and one that I'm definitely going to be trying to pick up for myself. And if you couldn't already figure it out, this shoe is most likely going to sell out. Then we've got another collegiate themed shoe with the Nike Dunk Low in the Kentucky colorway. This shoe is pretty much the same exact thing as a Syracuse colorway, except instead of being an orange and white, it's in Kentucky blue and white. I honestly don't know which colorway I like better. I think they're both really clean and I would be happy with either one. And unless you go to either one of those schools or you have something against one of those two colorways, I think most people are probably going to be going for both. So because of that, I bet you the Kentucky colorway will also sell out. And then rounding off the 14th, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the Desert Sage colorway. I actually just dropped a review on this sneaker a couple days ago, so if you'd like to check that video out, there'll be a link at the top of the screen. But in my opinion, this is one of the best 350 V2 colorways to drop in a really long time. It comes in green, which we haven't really seen a lot of from 350s, and it also has this crazy hit of orange, which really pops. If you've missed out on 350 V2s in the past, or you just really like this colorway, this is a great shoe to pick up, and most likely, it will sell out. Out. Then on March 15th, we've got the Nike LeBron 17 Low in Black University Red. Out of all the low top LeBrons that have released over the last couple years, I think the LeBron 17 Low is probably one of the best looking. I don't know what it is about this cut, and it could also be this colorway as well, because I think this black and red is pretty clean. That said, at the end of the day, it is just kind of a standard LeBron 17 Low, and I think there's probably going to be a lot of pairs available. So for that reason, I think the shoe is going to sit. Then moving on to March 16th, we've got the Nike LeBron 17 in College Navy. This is actually a pretty clean looking LeBron 17. It comes in a navy colorway with hits of white and red, and it's also got a gum outsole, which really ties the shoe together pretty nicely. One of my favorite details on the shoe is the Nike swoosh pinwheel that's actually found on the tongue of the sneaker. I think it gives it a unique look and more of a retro vibe. Overall, a clean but simple LeBron 17 that I think a lot of people will like, but not a lot of people will run out to grab. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. After that, we've got the Nike PG4 in the Oreo colorway. As you could probably guess from the name of this shoe, this is a black and white PG4. And that's about it. It's a clean looking sneaker. I can't take that away from it. But at the end of the day, it's not that exciting. It's a black and white shoe. I like some of the splatter print and I think out of all the PG4s that have dropped so far, this is the shoe that I would most likely pick up. But most likely it will be a GR and for that reason, I think the shoe is gonna sit. After that, we've got the Kyrie 6 Oreo. Same deal with this shoe, it's a white and black Kyrie 6. From what I can tell, it doesn't look like there's any splatter print. I could be missing it from the images, but from what I can see, it just kind of looks kind of plain. There's nothing wrong with it, and if it's the colors of your team, then I think it's a great shoe to pick up. But it's not something that I'm looking to grab, and I think a lot of people will probably let this one go too. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And then finally, rounding off the 16th, we've got the Nike Zoom Freak 1 Oreo. What can I say? It's a black and white Zoom Freak 1. It looks just like all the other shoes we just talked about, and I think it's probably going to sit. On March 19th, we've got the undefeated Nike Air Max 90 in black. This shoe has a limited release only at undefeated stores on the 14th, but it has a much wider release on the 19th. Even though from a distance, this shoe just kind of looks like a standard all black Air Max 90, when you get a closer look at the sneaker, you'll notice that undefeated actually made some changes to it. Changes include updating materials, removing side panels, and also elongating the Nike swoosh. It's a subtle but clean look that I think a lot of people will be into. And because it's an undefeated collaboration, I think this shoe will be pretty popular and and for that reason, I think it's gonna sell. 
After that, we've got the Air Max 1 London City Pack. This Air Max 1 comes in tonal grays with dark navy accents on the Nike swoosh. And I've got to be honest, the materials that they use on this sneaker actually look pretty premium. I actually really like how the shoe's colorway looks like a gradient, going from dark on the heel to light on the toe. And what's interesting is that they actually carried on that gradient on the lower side panel of the shoe, which usually only comes in one color. The London City Pack Air Max 1 is a surprisingly clean look that if I have the opportunity to grab, I might actually grab it. As to whether this shoe will sit or sell, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not sure about the release details of this shoe. It's possible that it could only release in London, which wouldn't surprise me, but it's also possible that it releases everywhere. I have no idea. But I'm going to be conservative and say that if you really want this shoe, you should go after it because I think it is possible that this shoe could sell out. And then rounding off the 19th, we've got the Air Max 1 Amsterdam City Pack. This shoe is pretty similar to the London City Pack, except it comes in different colorways and features three red X's on the toe. The colorway of this shoe is more of a tonal pink with some brown and red accents, and I actually think I like this colorway better. Again, I'm just not sure about release procedures for this shoe, but if this is something you want, you should definitely go for it, because I do think it is possible that this shoe could sell out. Then on March 21st, we've got the Air Jordan 4 SE Neon. As you can tell, this Air Jordan 4 is based off of the Neon Air Max 95, and it makes sense that this shoe was dropping around this time because it's Air Max month. As far as sneaker colorway mashups go, I think this is one of the more successful mashups. I'm not a huge fan of the Air Max 95 or even that Neon colorway, but there's something about this mashup that kind of looks all right, and I don't know if that's the tonal grays or just the very small hits of green, but there's something about this that I kind of like. Now I'm not totally in love with this shoe. This is not a shoe that I want to run out to the store and grab, but I do think people will be excited about this sneaker and this colorway. If you're a fan of the Jordan 4 or a fan of the Neon Air Max 95, this is definitely a crossover worth taking a look at and possibly picking up. Although there are a lot of people out there who are really excited about this sneaker, I don't know if it's enough people to really make this sneaker sell out. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And then rounding off the 21st, we've got another Yeezy release with the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 in the Cinder colorway. Even though this is a pretty simple colorway, it's still one of the cleanest 350 V2 colorways to drop, at least in my opinion. The shoe comes in a primarily black look with this really nice gum outsole, and while I would have preferred it if the entire midsole had been gum, I still think it's a nice look. The shoe still features the semi-translucent mesh on the side of the sneaker instead of the 3M, which I actually think I kind of prefer the 3M, but that's just my own personal preference. And overall, it's a clean shoe, and at the end of the day, it's still a Yeezy. And so for that reason, I think the shoe is going to sell. Then on March 25th, we've got another Yeezy releasing with the Yeezy Boost 380 Mist. Now you might be saying, huh, that colorway already released, and in a way, you would be right. This colorway of the 380 did release a couple weeks back, however, it released in the reflective version. This time around, the Mist 380 is getting a wider release in a non-reflective version. I actually think the 380 is the most comfortable Yeezy sneaker to ever release. It's got a super soft boost midsole and seemingly more boost than the 350, and the upper is a little bit more comfortable. The colorway I'm not a huge fan of, of. I think the brown is a little bit weird on the upper of the sneaker, but overall I think it's a good looking shoe and at the end of the day it's still a Yeezy. Like the reflective colorway that released a couple weeks back, I think the Yeezy Boost 380 Mist will definitely sell out. Moving on to Air Max Day, March 26th, we've got the first release of the Air Max 2090. This futuristic looking brand new Air Max model is heavily inspired by the Air Max 90. The shoe features a simple but layered upper with a pretty neutral color palette. And looking around the shoe, you can definitely see some design cues that were inspired by the Air Max 90. Overall, it's a clean sneaker that I'm pretty excited for, and I actually plan to pick up a pair for myself. Following that up, we've got another colorway of the undefeated Air Max 90, this time around in Pacific Blue. In the same way that the black undefeated Air Max 90 has an updated upper and some interesting new materials, this Pacific Blue colorway is pretty similar except in a much more vibrant color. The upper of the shoe features bright blues, whites, purples, and yellows, and it's definitely a loud looking sneaker. I honestly don't know how popular it'll be compared to the black colorway, but I still think it will be a relatively limited release and people will be excited about it. So for that reason, I think it's gonna sell. After that, we've got the Air Max 90 Reverse Duck Camo. This shoe is a throwback to the wildly hyped up Air Max 90 Duck Camo from years ago. And even though it's not exactly the same colorway, I still think a lot of people will be excited about it. This new Reverse Duck Camo colorway, as the name would suggest, does flip some of the colors and some of the color blocking from the original colorway. However, the tones of the colors seem to be exactly the same. While this new variant of the Duck Camo Air Max 90 might not be as popular as the original, I think a lot of people who missed out on that original pair or just really like Camo will be trying to grab this sneaker, and for that reason, I think this shoe is going to sell. 
And rounding off the 26th, we've got the Fear of God Converse Chuck Taylor 70 High. This pair of Chuck 70 Highs seems like a standard pair of Chucks until you get a closer look. The upper is covered in black and the tongue is actually made up of sort of a canvas or sail white color. But the most defining feature of this shoe are the laces that wrap around the ankle area. And while, yes, you could probably do this with a standard pair of chucks, it does look like they added a lace loop on the back of the shoe to facilitate this sort of wraparound lacing system. It's a nice looking pair of chucks, and Fear of God is hot right now. So because of that, I think this shoe is going to sell out. And then, rounding off the month, on March 28th, we've got the Air Jordan 5 Fire Red. I have been looking forward to the next retro of this shoe for so long. This was actually the first shoe that I ever did a custom on. In fact, I did a bunch of customs on the Fire Red 5s because they had just re-released. Even though this shoe is a more simple colorway, and I'm sure it's going to be a general release, I know a lot of people have nostalgia towards this shoe, me in particular, and I think a lot of people are going to run out and grab it when it releases. So, for that reason, I think it's going to sell. But that pretty much wraps up the video for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on this list and which one of these shoes you're looking forward to most. So let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out the video on how this Seth Fowler We Are Underdogs Origin sneaker was made. Of course, I've left a link in the description below. And I've also left a link down there if you want to pre-order the sneaker for yourself. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all in the next one.